Welcome back. Today we've got a problem to fix. Maybe you're refinishing some furniture and trying to flip it, or maybe you just have an old dresser that the slides don't work on it. I'm going to show you how to repair them today. And all the tools and products that I use in this video will be linked in the description box below, so you can easily find it and do this job yourself in no time. So we can see here, we take out the drawer. Part of our problem is, looks like somebody's been in here before and there's no guide here to help guide the drawer along that rail here, that track. You can see under normal operation, it should behave like that where it rides, the guide rides along that slide. However, here with our broken one, you can see without any guide, it won't slide along the track and therefore will get hung up and be a pain to use. Let's first inspect the quality of the track. We first want to make sure that the track is A, securely mounted and as you can see here there's no barely any play here which is good because obviously as we're going to use that drawer there's going to be a lot of force on this track so we want to ensure that it's held well in place. The next thing you want to do is ensure that, at least for this one, you can see there's two grooves on each side that the guide will travel along. So we want to ensure that there's no major chips or tear out or else the glide will come out, rendering this track useless. So it fills all the way along. There's no major chips. It's tapered here just to make it so that the glide easily uh, gets carried in. So looks like the track is good. Here we are at the back of the damaged drawer. So we want to remove the carnage here from the old guide. Importantly, if you're going to be using these center guides, we we'll want to make sure that the gap between here is consistent with the track width. So again, it tapers here at the bottom, so you don't want to take your measurement there. We'll go back a little bit here and you can see it looks like it's about an inch. You can go all the way back just to double check that it stays consistent. There are no weird inconsistencies, but we need at least an inch once we've ensured that the gap on the guide will fit the track that we have, or if it comes with a replacement one, we won't even need to worry about that. I'm just gonna get to do a test here just before I mount it to the back to ensure that it slides. And as you can see, it slides okay, but obviously no one wants to fight this hard to get a drawer in. So there's probably just some weird bumps and inconsistencies here in the track. Obviously it's seen some wear and tear. So you can either take some sandpaper just to kind of refine within the track here, or you can take a utility blade and just kind of carve out some of that track in there to help one or the other glide more smoothly. Give it a test. Okay, so that slides a lot better. It's like the back here. You can put a pencil mark too, just so you're not wasting your time going where you've already been. So it seems like this back few inches here is still a little proud. You can also take a utility knife and just chamfer the edges, which means to kind of just round them off by cutting just so it doesn't catch as much. We're gonna actually, I've been using 60 grit sandpaper, which the lower the grit, the more abrasive it is. So I'm gonna actually go to a higher grit, maybe like a 200 or something, just to help refine it a little bit so it's not as coarse, but you can also, like I said, chamfer, or even instead of sanding down the track, just, I guess, kind of sand down, if you will, the guide here, but 
Either way works. Want to ensure that this track here is smooth so the guy doesn't get hung up at any point. Feels good all the way. Again, using higher grit sandpaper will be more fine, giving you a softer finish. Additionally, you want to double check here on the sides that these little plastic guides or rests are A, present and in good condition, not wobbling about because that will catch the drawer. This basically gives the, there's one here I'll show you on the left, one here on the right, and that just helps A, have the track, the drawer have something to rest on so that it, when it slides out, it's not sliding against the bare wood. So if you don't have those, fortunately the kit does come with some. They're L-shaped, it really doesn't matter. And then also has some screws so you can tack those in. Again, to give some surface area for that drawer to rub against so it's not on the wood. You can use the other guide to put it on the front side of the drawer, but that's a little bit more cumbersome. So now we're here back on the back side of the drawer. Here's our guide that we've modified slightly. So as you can see, this is where the track slides into. So we just need to ensure that our retrofit guide here will now work. So it looks like it's about here, but obviously we want this thing to sit flush. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit of carpentry work just to get it so these two tabs can fit under here. So if you want a really good get this measurement, It's close to one and three eighths. So that's what, if we divide that in half, that's 11 sixteenths. So I just wanna have a center mark here to indicate where that is. Because again, what we're trying to do is just Get it so that this guy can sit flush against here. As you can see here, there's a flat side and then there's a more curved side. So we wanna make sure that this flat side does sit flat up against here. So we're gonna need a little bit of carbon. Now I want to ensure that the guide here is still center with the center of the track. And once it looks good, we're just gonna add the screws. An important tip before using the included hardware is to ensure that if you do use it, the screw won't pop through the back of your drawer. So as you can see here, if I have this flush, the head of the screw flush, it's, it'll likely po puncture through because there's not much plastic between the screw head and the drawer. So I'm gonna see if I can actually find a thinner screw or a shorter screw so I don't have something pokey in the back of this drawer. We wanna ensure the drill bit we use is smaller or at least thinner than the screw we're gonna be using just so the threads can actually bite into the wood. Here's the one that it came with. I'm gonna use this one. It's not a round head, which is not the end of the world, but I just don't wanna poke through the back. Let's test it. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any helpful tips or comments, please put them in the 
below in the comment section. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, give this video a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I welcome you to do so. And I'll catch you in the next video.